Cut it off. Lorena Bobbitt did what every man fears, and that's a woman's going to castrate him or cut off his penis and take away his symbol of manhood. She. Very upset because I was pregnant, and he said that he doesn't want to have a child. He also said that he doesn't want me to have a baby, so he, he said that do whatever the rest of the, the girls in trouble do. So he showed me a, a, a yellow pages on on which he uh, opened it up and, and showed me some clinic, clinics uh, that do the abortion, I guess abortion centers, on the yellow pages. Did you consider yourself to be a girl in trouble? No, I was married to him. When you were shown these abortion clinics yeah. uh, names, what did you feel that your choices were? He also told me that if I don't have the that if I have the baby, because I told him I will have it without without him anyway, he said that he will leave me. So I said, How could you do this? I don't want to have a child without a father. Because I didn't grow without a father. And then I couldn't even support the baby. Did you eventually go someplace with your husband? Yeah. Where did you go? We went to the, he took, he took me to the abortion clinic. How did he treat you at the abortion clinic? Yeah, I, I was very, I was very nervous and um, I was never in that kind of place before and uh, we were waiting in the waiting room and he was, he was saying to me that, that I'm going to die, that the needles are going to be so big and they're going to go through my bones and that I was going to die. And he was laughing about me and I was crying. The nurse had to come up and and asked what happened to me, what was wrong, because I was crying. And I just told her that, that I want my husband to be away from me. And she took me to another room. So. How did you feel after you had the abortion? I, uh, I didn't want to have an abortion. I feel very sad. I was guilty. I feel really guilty. That's how I feel. Were you willing to sleep with your husband after that? No, no. Did you for a while? I, I didn't want to sleep with him. I didn't want to see him. Did it affect your appetite? Yes, it did. How so? I couldn't eat. I was, I feel very weak. I feel sick. I feel also sleepy, tired. I feel like nothing, like the life is over, I felt, I feel like I was falling apart. In early June, was there an incident involving a tape recorder? Yes, sir, it was. Why did you have the tape recorder? I wanted to have a divorce, and I told him in May that I wanted to have a divorce because his friend was going to come down, and I started pack my things. So he told me that if I don't leave, he'll kick me out of the house. But I have no money, so I have to, I, uh, I remember listen to this attorney and, and uh, I guess she wanted, I wanted to give her some evidence and uh, I didn't know how to get it. So I have to get, I got myself a tape recorder and I recorded the insults and the put downs that he did to me so I can show it to the divorce uh, lawyer. What kind of insults and put downs was he giving? He, he was saying, he was saying bad words to me. Um, in the, did he talk about your figure? Yes, he said that I'm Spanish, that I don't have blonde hair, I don't have blue eyes, and uh, I'm too small. And, and skinny, and uh, he wanted a bigger woman, and uh, he told me that, that I was Spanish, and I don't deserve him. All this was with the bad words together. He would 
if, for example, he was saying F Spanish. What happened the night of the tape that he found the tape for? What did he do? Oh, well, he he wanted to grab money from my purse, and instead of money, he find a little tape recorder. So he um he took the tape recorder and and he played the tape, and it was his voice coming out from the tape recorder. And uh, I said, "Give me that." And then he said, "What is this? What a bad words." He used bad words all the time, and uh, I said nothing. And uh, he he hit me, he slapped me, he pulled my hair. Did he play the tape? Not really, because it was just hearing those insults in the tape, and then he. Did he, he play something so he knew it was on? Yes, he knew he was him. It was his voice on it. He was hearing his own voice on the tape recorder. And what happened then? He wanted an explanation, and he came to me, and I didn't give him any explanation. And he bit me up there. He also raped me there. Now, would you describe the kicks that he would use? He, he kicked me in my stomach, and he threw me to the wall. Was he kicking like this? No, he, he was kicking like this. It was like was a side, side karate kick. And he went straight, straight through my stomach. To my stomach. Were you afraid of him? Yes, I was really scared. I was really afraid. I I was sitting by in the bed and I told him why did he do this to me again and again and again. <laughs> Nothing pushed me away. He said he doesn't care. He doesn't care for my feelings. That's what he said. What did you do? I just tried to calm myself down. And I went to the kitchen for a glass of water. Get the glass of water from the I get the glass from the cabinet and I pour some water from the refrigerator. And I uh, I I was drinking the water. <laughs> I tried to calm myself down and, and I the only light that was on was the refrigerator light and uh, I saw the knife. I remember many things since then. I remember a lot of things he said to me. I remember the first time he raped me. I remember when, when he told me about the syringes to go through my bones and I was going to die. I remember the put downs that he told me. There was just so many pictures on my head. And there were just... There were just pictures there in my head. <laughs> I remember the insults and the bad words that he told me. I remember every time that he had, 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 sex, had sex with me. He hurt me. <laughs> I remember everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> me about the abortion. I remember everything. Do you remember cutting him? No, I don't remember that. Were you thinking Sorry, about I don't right remember wrong that. Judge, I'm going to object to the point later. You don't remember leaving your apartment that night? No. You don't remember picking up your purse and Robbie's Game Boy? That's what I, I assume, so I had to answer to myself. I, I have to answer to myself but what you, I did. You don't remember it? No, ma'am. I, I, no, I don't remember that. No. And the next thing you remember is when you were driving to your friend Janice's house. Yes. yes. And you were getting close to a stop sign. Yes. 
and you realized that there was something in your left hand. Yes. And you realized it was your husband's penis. Yes. And you were just horrified, isn't that right? Yes. And you just wanted to get rid of it, isn't that right? Yes. So you went and got rid of it, just like that, yes, right? Yes, throw it out, yes. Just like that. No, I don't remember how I threw it, just like that. No, I just, I just want to get rid of it. Go ahead, Mr. Black. Mr. Bobbitt, yes. you testified that Jana had been a very good friend to you. Yes. She had offered you a place to stay. Yes. That Mrs. K you had lived with Mrs. Castro before. Yes. And she had offered you a place to stay. Yes. You had lived with Mrs. Beltran before. Yes. And you knew you could turn to Mrs. Beltran if you needed her. Diane Hall had offered you a place to stay. Yes. She lived right downstairs. Yes. And you had put some of your boxes in her apartment. Yes. Tuesday night, Ella Jones said that you could stay with her. Yes. Monday morning, Stephen Rope from juvenile court explained that if you got a protective order, your husband could be barred from your house. Yes. Dr. Inman put you in touch with the social service people who told you about getting a protective order. Yes. Your friends Lynn Aquaviva and Roma Anastasi had come and gotten you before. Yes. You knew about calling 911 to get the police. Yes. You had done that before. Yes. You didn't want to get a divorce. Isn't that true, ma'am? No, ma'am. I... I... I wanted to, him not to rape me, and I wanted him to... not to follow me. I was very scared. I was really scared. But you're saying under oath that you don't remember cutting him. No. <laughs> That's what I assume happened. I wanted an answer to myself. Do you remember telling Dr. Gwaltney that you walked in the bedroom, you pulled the sheet back, you looked at his whole body, and then you did it, then you cut him? Do you remember saying that? I'm not sure if I said that, but maybe I did say that. Every time I tried to say something, I... I tried to give it the right answer, and I tried my best. I really well, tried, tried my best. you tried to tell the truth, didn't you? Yes, I, I, I want an answer for myself, too. Mrs. Baba, isn't that the truth? You looked at his whole body, and then you did it? I didn't look at his whole body. I don't remember looking at him, his own body. I... Let me ask you this. When you say you remember picking up the knife? Yeah. What were you thinking when you picked up the knife? The pictures came off. The, the pictures came off in my mind. Did you think about cutting John? No. No, I didn't. I just think of the pictures. There were a couple of times during your marriage, Mrs. Bobbitt, when you thought your husband was having an affair. Isn't that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that made you upset and angry, didn't it? He had an affair, and I, I didn't know how to handle that. I just told him that if he wanted to have an affair, he had to be divorced first. Hadn't you told a friend earlier that if you ever found out he had an affair, you would cut his penis off? No, I did not say that. You have never said that? No, ma'am, no. Had done. The issue was not whether Lorena Bobbitt did what her husband claimed she did. The facts about the act were evident. She pulled on my groin area twice, I think. I felt a couple jerks, and then, uh, uh, and then that, after that, she just, you know, cut it off. 
The seven-woman, five-man jury heard the story of how Mrs. Bobbitt ran from their apartment with Mr. Bobbitt's penis in her hand and how the organ was reattached in a nine-and-a-half-hour operation. But the heart of the testimony came as the defense tried to prove that Lorena Bobbitt was justified in doing what she did. A string of witnesses told stories of physical and verbal abuse of Lorena by John. He kicked me. He told me that I told you to, not to cry. And he slapped me on my face. He pulled my hair. And he squeezed my face. Lawyers took two hours to summarize their cases. He was drunk. He wanted to have sex. She didn't. That's her right. He forced her to have sex. She was angry, and she retaliated against him. But, you know, folks, we don't live in a society that is governed by revenge. We don't live in a society in which whoever has the biggest knife wins. It was probably one of the most bizarre acts that has happened in this country in a long, long time. Everything about this case, it is so unique what she did going out of that house with a Game Boy, a penis in the hand. Everything about this case is crazy and bizarre. You may have a seat if you would, please, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict in the case? Yes, sir. Is this your unanimous verdict? Yes, sir. Would the defendant please stand? In the case of Commonwealth of Virginia versus Lorena Lenore Bobbitt, criminal number 33821, we, the jury, find the defendant, Lorena Lenore Bobbitt, not guilty of malicious wounding as charged in the indictment by reason of insanity. Signed, Clay S. Kokalis, four persons. Do the counsel wish for the jury to be posed? No, no. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, let me thank you for the time and effort that you put into this matter. It has taken two weeks. At this time, I'll ask all parties to remain in the courtroom and be quiet. It has taken two weeks. Thank you for your time and effort. At this time, you're excused. You may go with the bailiff.